Hello, good afternoon, and maybe good evening or good morning, everyone, depending on which part of the world you come from. Welcome to the IGP Open Day. I'm Dr. Yuan He, and I'm a staff from the IGP. So first of all, thank you very much for spending time with us. Uh, on this panel today, we have myself, the chair of this panel, and also the GP program leader. We also have Professor Bob Constanza, who is the PI PPP leader, Dr. Conrad, who is the PI program leader, Francesca Harrison, who is our senior teaching fellow here at IGP, and she will also answer technical questions and student-related questions. Amanda on this panel, in her capacity as both a former student and also as a communications assistant to talk about her experience and the direct questions during the Q&A. We also have Herbert, who is the current student, and uh, he will introduce about his experience as a current GP student. And also, he is the lead program representative for MSC Pi program. And Vicky, who is our communications manager, helps us to organize this whole program. I will first of all give you a very brief introduction about today's program and also how we plan to organize it. As you might know, we have three programs. Each of us is going to give a 15-minute presentation about our respective program. For all of that, Amanda and Herbert, as our former and current students, will talk about their studying and learning experience with us. And then the panel will be opened to answer any questions you have. So throughout the process, you're very welcome to drop your questions in the Q&A section, where we will collect all of them and answer them one by one after the presentation. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce the IGP and the GP program. The IGP is a unique academic department at the UCL. We are taking directly taking up the key global challenges that are facing us now. So I think many of our potential applicants might become from social science or related background, but we also have engineering students or students in fashion from a diverse background. But I think what brings people together at the IGP is our passion for the big global challenges that people from different parts of the world are facing, be it inequality or climate crisis or exclusion. So the, to tackle these big global challenges, it requires a radical rethinking of the way we think about prosperity. Uh, we are unique because we don't only look at or explore these issues in theory. We are actively engaged in challenging these things for the better. And that is the kind of engagement our, that influences our research and the teaching. So IGP is a research-focused institute that tries to bring up the frontier of knowledge to our teaching programs. So you are embedded in the kind of a very um, embedded teaching and the learning environment uh, supported by our research. So we are also unique because of a transdisciplinary approach to these challenges. We have people from a range of discipline backgrounds, as you can see from the panel today, because we are going to introduce about ourselves later on. We, but we are working together on the real world issues to solve them. So what brings us together is our recognition that we have to move on from orthodox ideas of economic growth and GDP to deal with these challenges, which are huge. And as you can see from here on the slide, um, a quote from our founding director, Professor Henriette Moore, prosperity isn't just about improving GDP. You also need to fight inequality, promote social cohesion, safeguard the environment, and provide education, health, and that decent employment and giving people hope for the future. Uh, it, it's not a big problem if you don't understand what exactly uh, global prosperity means. And many of our students um, also, it is ongoing process. So once you join the IGP, it is an ongoing process where we we'll take on board our students to explore what IGP actually means for people come from different backgrounds together in this process. Um, that is why your unique um, experience and also your lived experience would be a great contribution once you join the IGP. So as you can see from here, we currently live in a world where rampant economic growth and consumption has not only failed to address the critical challenges of the day, but rather is the driver of such problems, right? 
So this is a slide uh, with the latest information about world inequality in terms of income and the wealth. As you can see from the slide, in 2021, the richest 10% of the global population currently take home 52% of the total income. The poorest half of the global population only earn just 8%. And this is the global average, and the situation might be even worse for some certain countries. And when it comes to wealth, uh, wealth defined as valuable assets and items over and above income, which is accumulated kind of a stock, the gap is even wider. So the poorest half of the global population owns just the 2% of the global total, while the richest 10% owns 76% of world wealth. So this is the big challenge the world is facing. And we also live in a world where critical earth systems and the planetary boundaries are being breached at an alarming rate. And while global pandemics not only propose major public health challenges, but also expose the fragility of our economics, the undervaluing of key workers and the deep ethnic inequalities that sees minorities most affected. And that is why, um, as you will hear from uh, Professor Constanza's presentation, we are introducing the new PPP program specifically to tackle the environmental aspect and ecological aspect of the world's development or the world's prosperity. So we might prefer to these inter interlinked challenges. As we mentioned, we have social challenges, we have environmental challenges, and we also try to include the business innovation, entrepreneurship in tackling these problems. So we prefer to um, refer to these inter interlinked challenges as grand challenges or what we call wicked problems. Do we best work with communities, policymakers, and the diverse stakeholders to inclusively and equitably redesign the economics, societies, business, and the environment that humanity needs for the 21st century? So, as you can see here, these are the keywords that's linked to the grand challenges that we try to tackle or address at the IGP. So, while we draw inspiration from diverse sources, and have many ideas and ongoing projects targeted towards these challenges, we certainly don't have all the answers. And that is why we need each of you. And that is why we need to challenge you to help us to address these challenges. I think one of the great disadvantages uh, of IGP, as you can see from this picture, is the diverse background in terms of both uh, people's upbringing, people's uh, cultural background, uh, their geographic diversity, as well as their interdisciplinary and intellectual uh, diversity within the IGP. So when you join the IGP, you don't just study with us, rather you join a community of like-minded individuals from professors and the students to alumni and even citizen scientists from around the world committed to making change. Uh, we expect you to actively participate in this community to generate your own knowledge and the solutions and to go out to the world to make real changes. So whether working in policy, NGO, or as an entrepreneur or in established business, we expect you to become leaders and the change makers to be involved and the support um, in our alumni community beyond your year of formal study. In other words, MSA study here, the master study program at the IGP is not just a single year, but rather start of a long-term process. So here we gather a lot of people, a lot of different experience together, and we help to build communities year by year. So by the time you graduate, you don't only accumulate knowledge that you learned throughout this year, but you are exposed to wide variety of communities and the stakeholders and alumni groups to help to make the changes that we have discussed in class to realize them and make them happen in the real world. When you join us, you will learn about some of the more cutting edge thinkers who are challenging current economic thinking and business models. So here you can see, um, this is a publication from the IGP's working paper series. And this is an article co-written by Professor Harriet Moore, who is our founding director, and uh, Dr. Nikolai Minchev, who will be teaching you on various classes about the prosperity-related theory. 
And here, we will also invite you to become involved with ongoing IGP research, working with citizen scientists from around the world and in the UK. So you, some, for some of you, um, you might be hearing the term citizen scientist for the first time. And don't worry, uh, it is not because um, you are not well prepared. It's because this is a very cutting edge kind of a bottom up research method that we are trying to lead in on a UCL scope and then try to train the local people from different communities to get involved in research and help to shape policies based upon their own local experience. So this is a quite, quite cutting edge new research method that we try to champion in the IGP. And as you can see, we have flagship pro projects almost all across the world. Here is a picture of our project in Kenya. And here is a picture from the uh, citizen scientists in the project seen in Lebanon. Uh, we also work with entrepreneurs on our Fast Forward 2030 program to address the grand challenges from the ground up, but mainly from an entrepreneurship perspective. We also expect you to draw on the deep experience of a major prosperity collapse. So these collapse are um, location and community-based projects to deliver prosperity results with the community. So these are individual research projects, but all linked together under the prosperity umbrella. So these collab projects, which aims to work with citizens and stakeholders to develop and co-design new vision for prosperity. So they include the Proco UK and the flag flagship London Prosperity Board. So this is based upon the development of the East London, which hosted the London Olympic Games back in 2012. And um, because the government, the UK government promised to develop this area. So uh, LGP, uh, IGP has been working with the local community in the past almost 10 years and established a very strong relationship in the local community. Here, uh, it is the website of our Proco Lebanon and, uh, project, and it is called the Relief Center. Uh, relief meaning the prosperity in the age of mass displacement or speed up the transition to sustainable, prosperous and societies in the context of mass displacement. And you can see here the focus when it comes to the Lebanon context, we have a more um, specific focus that's suited to the local needs or addressing the most pressing problem of the local area. And in the context of Lebanon, it is the mass displacement. And here, this is our prosperity collab in Kenya. And the Professor Harriet Moore, as you might know, who she is an um, African studies expert and anthropologist, and she has been working with African various African countries for decades. And here we just launched the Asia Prosperity Hub earlier this year to cover uh, the geographic area of Asia. And I'm part of the leader, co-leader of the Asia Prosperity Hub. And we try to organize a series of events related to Asia from different perspectives. So um, when you join the IGP, you will be able to join, draw on a wealth of expertise, include our esteemed the director and the professional staff. So um, a bit of introduction about who is who at the IGP. So here, as you can see, we have Professor, and she is also a dame in the House of Lords in the UK, Professor Harriet Moore, who is the founding director of the UCL Institute for Global Prosperity. She is also the chair of the culture, philosophy, and design here at the UCL. You will be also be able to meet our deputy director of the IGP, uh, Professor Christopher Hacker, and also our director of education, uh, Professor Kate McLean, uh, once you join. And uh, both uh, Professor uh, Hacker and Professor McLean are the main teaching staff uh, for the GP program. And here um, you will also be able to meet Dr. Nikolai Minchev, who is the director of research, uh, our senior um, research fellow, Dr. Uh, Sertaj uh, Seklu, who is an uh, expert in the um, Muslim studies in the Middle East, uh, in, in, in Central Asia and Middle Asia. Uh, we also have 
uh, Professor Bob Constanza on the panel today, who is our distinguished professor on the ecological economics. And here it's me. Um, I'm focusing my own research, focus on, on comparative studies, especially the democratic transitions of various countries in Asia with specific focus on uh, China, India, and recently Korea as a very successful um, Asian country who has not only developed economically, but also has installed a very successful democratic system um, in the country. We also have Professor uh, of uh, Professor Jack McLeod, who is the Professor of Natural Prosperity, Sustainable Development and the Knowledge System at the UCL. And she has um, had very long work experience with the African uh, communities to bring out ecological changes. So these are the main staff at the IGP, but not only limited to them because of time constraint. So we are not able to list all the staff here, but these are the, just the main teaching staff um, at the IGP. So um, I think uh, that was an introduction about the whole IGP program. And uh, specifically now, I'm going to give an introduction about MSC Global Prosperity Program. So the um, MSC Global Prosperity Pro Program is the first, our very first uh, master's program at the um, Institute of Global Prosperity, where we try to tackle uh, the social aspect of prosperity related uh, challenges. So in this specific program, we will cover the big ideas in prosperity thinking from happiness and well-being to planetary limits, uh, but with the focus on the on the social aspect. So we receive a lot of inquiries from students like how, what are the differences between these three programs and how do I choose? So uh, without losing the nuances of different programs, and obviously we do collaborate a lot within IGP, but the MSC Global Prosperity Program has a very strong emphasis on the social aspect of these grand challenges. So you will come to understand the critical history of economic growth and consumerism, for example, and also we'll also discuss the impact of colonialism and development and identify the roots of today's global challenges. You will also critically interrogate alternative approaches to researching and measuring prosperity. So this is the focus we Apart from teaching the main theories, a very strong component of the program is to teach you research methods, like how do we research these programs and the, such teaching will help you to facilitate you to conduct your own research on this aspect. You will also study in depth existing cases from around the world that illustrate the complex challenges and the successful pathways to prosperity and including IGP's own research projects. You will, as I said earlier, you will be heavily embedded in a research uh, rich environment. Uh, you, are able, you will also be able to learn about practice methods for engaging and co-design features with communities and the stakeholders. So we do collaborate a lot with various uh, stakeholders in the real world to address their real challenges. So this is a broader kind of a, uh, intellectual uh, coverage of the Global Prosperity Program. And here on this slide, you can see the course structure. So as you, uh, for, for those who are not quite familiar with the UK educational system, so here in the UK and especially at UCL, we have three different terms. Each term will cover like about two, two to three months, depending on different semester, de depending on different like uh, terms. So throughout the program, you will study 180 master level credits in total, and it comprising of two credit core modules in each main term, plus one optional module. So to put it simply, so in term one and in term two, you are required to take three different modules, and two of them are compulsory, which is provided by IGP. And you have the optional module, that you can choose from. So you can either choose an internal module and we do provide a variety of choices at the IGP. So you can choose from the courses that we provide at the IGP or you can go beyond the IGP and collaborate um, and also learn from other 
uh, UCL departments. For example, in previous years, we have students who uh, choose courses from the business school, uh, from uh, Department of Public Policy, for example, or international relations or politics or even culture studies. So these are all options that's available to you for the optional module. And in term two, it's the same kind of format. So two compulsory modules from the IDP and one optional module that, um, that you can focus on depending on your own personal interest. And starting from term two and the term three especially, you need to write a dissertation that is about uh, 12 to 15,000 words. And you will then, and this whole dissertation will undertake a major 90 credit uh, with a specialist a personal supervisor. So this is really the opportunity where you can combine all the knowledge that you've learned at the IGP with the focus of your personal interest as reflected in your personal modules and to bring all this knowledge together to conduct a piece of research uh, that fits your own interest and uh, with the under the guidance of a supervisor either from the IGP or from UCL. And in very rare cases, uh, if you are successful, you can contact even an external supervisor to do your dissertation. So, and there is also part-time and module flex flexible options available for students who are, for example, uh, need to work or need to take care of their families. So we are quite open to accommodate students in those situations. So this is basically how you are going to spend the free learning terms here at the IGP. And this format is almost the same for the other two uh, MSc programs. Um, and in each term, as you can see here, there is a foundational theoretical module um, and also a research method module. So the teaching, the compulsory courses in IGP is a combination of theory and the methods. And it's the same for term two, but in term two, you will be able, based upon your learning in term one, you will be able to deepen your studies and learn some advanced theories and methods in term two. So this is basically the intellectual structure of your time spent at, at, at the IGP. Uh, so scholarships, I think Francesca can talk more about these scholarships later on, but we do have provide um, a, a wide variety of financial awards uh, aimed at assisting both prospective and current students with their studies. So, um, but you do need, uh, very often you do need admissions from the IGP, for example, offer letter from the IGP to apply for scholarships. So it is better that you apply as early as possible because some of these scholarships, they can, uh, and the deadline can finish quite early. So if you apply too late, you might be missing this, all these opportunities. So do keep an eye on the deadlines of the, these scholarships and apply early. And we highly encourage students that if you have applied for a scholarship, uh, we encourage you to send an email to us uh, directly informing us that, oh, I've applied for this scholarship and I would appreciate if you can make an early decision because I might need a offer letter from IGP to be eligible for consideration for these scholarships. So if that's the case, do drop us an email and we usually respond to students' emails uh, very in a very timely manner. So these are the options uh, scholarships that you can consider. We have the IGP uh, BAME scholarship, which is has changed its name recently. I think it's called the Future Leaders or something. I think Francesca can, can talk about it later on. Uh, you also have access to the Bartlett, which is like a kind of a upper uh, departmental uh, scholarships. Uh, and of course, uh, scholarships provided by UCL you are eligible to apply for that. So for Commonwealth students, you are welcome to apply for the Commonwealth Shared Scholarship and the Chivening Scholarship, which is a collaboration between the UK government with many different countries. But you need, I think, usually two years of working experience in order to apply for the Chivening Scholarships. So this is an introduction about the scholarship. 
So career-wise, in addition to the core teaching IGP offers, a wealth of additional career benefits. So you will be guided through this in the formal program of personal tutoring, and they usually include, um, we organize a series of events of speaker events with invited leading guest academics and the practitioners to expose you and introduce you to all kinds of career possibilities uh, for you to consider after you graduate from the IGP. And usually, because this is a one-year master's program, uh, you need to consider your career options very early on because um, the UK recruit system, um, they can it take quite a few months for you to uh, go through different stages. So, and we will provide you uh, guidance step-by-step step to help you survive in the UK system for international students who are not familiar with the system. Um, you will also be, uh, be able to receive personal leadership and professional skills training. We also teach you transfer transferable prosperity and impact measurement skills writing and communication skills, which is essential, I think, in the digital world. You will be able to receive field peer support from our expanding and the global collaborative and alumni community. You will have the opportunity to work with remarkable partners and projects around the world. You will also have multiple opportunities to develop your own way to make a difference, which is quite relevant for students who are already uh, running their own business or NGOs or institutes, I think, uh, which is quite relevant for the PI program. Um, thank you for listening. And here is a list of useful links that you can explore further. So that will be my part of the introduction. And I will now introduce Professor Bob Constanza to introduce the PPP program. Thanks, Yuan, for that uh, that introduction. I think we covered a lot of uh, what people need to know about IGP and and the Global Prosperity Program. And I'm going to share my screen now with you about the PPP program. So um, Aida Kubishevsky will actually be leading this program. Um, and uh, we both moved here from uh, Australia just uh, this last January. So this is... Uh, new for us and new for you and the program will be starting in September of 2023. Um, <clears throat> so let's see. And in this program, I think we're going to focus a bit more on the planet side of the prosperity people and planet um, and understanding uh, the ecological life support system and the fact that you know we live in a complex nonlinear adaptive system with thresholds and tipping points, surprises, and we're taking a um, a systems view of how the uh, the economy is embedded in uh, this larger uh, society and and in, and the environment. So uh, we live in a whole new geologic epoch uh, these days called the Anthropocene uh, because of the magnitude of human influence on the on our planetary life support system. So the conventional view, uh, you know, separates the economy from society from nature uh, in quotes and i think a a more comprehensive more systems view an ecological economics view if you will uh, <clears throat> recognizes that the the economy is embedded in society and and the rest of nature the environment but we're all part of nature really uh, so i think this in the anthropocene this this new um, view of the economy and its its role, its position uh, in, in the rest of, of nature uh, is essential, uh, really, if we're going to achieve prosperity, global prosperity, sustainable well-being, uh, the kind of world that we all want. Here's another way of looking at it, is that we can think of these four basic types of assets that are all essential uh, to creating sustainable well-being. Uh, so our conventional built infrastructure, you know, what we normally think of when you say the word capital, uh, but also our human capital, our individual people, and all of their uh, their health and their education and their their uh, experiences. Social capital is is uh, all of the interactions among among people, our social networks, uh, our institutions, our governance systems, our cultures, etc. Uh, and natural capital is everything else in the world that we didn't have to build, uh, that we build things out of, essentially. Um, you know, our natural natural uh, ecosystems 
all of those things need to interact in complex ways in order to produce sustainable well-being. And ecosystem services are the benefits that natural capital provides uh, in, that, in that interaction. Uh, but uh, understanding this complex system is inherently a transdisciplinary uh, problem. Uh, as Yuan mentioned, I think that's what IGP is, is, is all about. How do we bring all of these different disciplines together uh, in order to actually understand how the system functions and how to create this, this uh, more prosperous and more sustainable um, <clears throat> future. Um, these ecosystem services that I mentioned, uh, there's a whole broad range of them. And a lot of what we've done uh, in the past is try to analyze, study, and value these, these ecosystem services. And we've found that uh, when you try to do that, that their value it far exceeds uh, their, the value of conventional uh, GDP towards the goal of, of human well-being. Uh, so by by ignoring those those services, uh, we, we're we're really leaving out a huge fraction of the things that actually does support uh, well-being and prosperity, and we can we can't afford to do that uh, any longer. So, beginning to to um, to value these services, I think, is really essential going forward. Um, we also need to recognize that you know we are exceeding the safe planetary boundaries, as they've been called. Um, in terms of climate change and biodiversity loss and land conversion. Um, and at the same time, we need to provide all of the, uh, the basic uh, elements of, of prosperity and well-being. And um, this diagram from Kate Rayworth's work on the, the donut economy is that shows that we want to be really in the, the safe and just space where we're below the ecological ceiling, but above the, the social foundation in terms of all of the elements of uh, that contribute to well-being. Um, so how do we do that? I think that's the challenge that uh, that this program and the rest the rest of IGP really are all working towards. How do we create that world uh, that uh, that can actually be sustainable and uh, and desirable? And how do we understand the complex system uh, that's necessary to get there? We've also done um, a lot of work trying to measure progress uh, toward toward that goal. And there are a lot of alternative measures uh, to, uh, to GDP. And as Juan mentioned, uh, we have to get uh, beyond uh, the focus on, on GDP as a, as a primary goal. Uh, one of those measures is something called the Genuine Progress Indicator, or GPI, which takes into account uh, the increasing inequality uh, that she mentioned, uh, the increasing uh, damages to the natural environment, the, the costs that those, that those involve. When you do that, you get um, quite a different picture. And this was our a global estimate that we did uh, comparing GP, GDP per capita and GPI per capita. And you can see that for decades now, we've been in a period of what Herman Daly has called uneconomic growth. The economy is growing in GDP terms, but it's not really economic because it's not improving genuine progress once you've taken into account the, the negative side effects uh, of that growth. So we want genuine progress to improve. We don't want necessarily want GDP to improve unless it's also improving that, that genuine progress. So understanding those connections and, and limitations and side effects, I think is really one of the important things that we're, uh, that we're trying to do. There are literally hundreds of alternative measures of, of well-being and prosperity out there at multiple scales. And I think uh, one of our goals is to, is to understand those linkages and that that prosperity at those multiple scales and how they interconnect. And also to look at possible futures. Uh, what, what are uh, the, the possibilities uh, for the future, the, the future of the world? And which of these worlds do we really prefer and want to help create? Uh, and there's been a lot of work in scenario planning and, uh, and related kinds of visioning activities and I think we're, uh, IGP is involved in, in those sorts of processes at, at, uh, at multiple scales, from the community scale all the way up to the, um, to the global scale. Um, and the UN Sustainable Development Goals, which I'm sure you've all heard of, uh, are a big step in that direction. You know, it was an effort by the international policy community to say there are a set of goals that go well beyond um, just economic growth. Uh, and embody, I think, a lot of the, a lot, if not most of the things that do actually contribute to sustainable well-being. So, so how do we achieve um, all of those goals in a more integrated way that recognizes uh, how they're connected and their, their trade-offs and synergies, 
and to be able to measure progress toward them, but also to model uh, how they um, how they behave in time and space. So uh, a lot of the program will be about uh, systems modeling, um, looking at, at how dynamic systems function uh, and how we be can better understand and project uh, the behavior into the future in order to achieve the kind of world that, that we all want. So uh, <clears throat> not sure if you uh, if you get the joke here, but this guy in the back of the climate summit is saying, yeah, what if it's a big hoax and we create this better world for nothing? Uh, so we need to focus, I think, more on what does this better world look like uh, to get over uh, some of the, the resistance uh, to making the changes that are necessary um, to, um, <clears throat> uh, to achieve a, a, a better climate, a better environment, and, uh, and true prosperity going forward. Oops. Let me go back to... Okay. So here's us, um, as I mentioned. <clears throat> um, I won't say too much more about that. You can you can look us up, uh, <clears throat> and it will introduce. This is the the basic uh, uh, elements of the program. Uh, this range of conceptual discussions about complex systems, uh, how they work, how they change, um, and, uh, <clears throat> and and how to better manage them uh, in a way that can produce the kind of world that we want different perspectives on understanding uh, the complex interactions among economic, social, political, and ecological processes, um, cutting edge methods for measuring and modeling uh, these interconnected planetary emergencies. How do we measure what is well-being? What is prosperity? Uh, how does it change over time in response to the different um, policies and, and, and uh, changes? And finally, the pathways for uh, leading the next generation in impactful knowledge and policy creation. So this program will also focus on uh, <clears throat> engaged um, learning uh, where uh, <clears throat> we engage the students and other stakeholders in, uh, in trying to act to solve real problems. You can see that it's arranged in a similar way uh, to, the, to the other programs uh, with three terms, term one being mainly about uh, background, term two being about uh, more intensive uh, methods and prototyping and engaged uh, uh, discussions with optional mod modules in both cases, and then a dissertation uh, in, term th in term three. I will stop there. Thank you both very much for a very detailed exp um, introduction of the PPP program. I think we will now uh, welcome Conrad to give an introduction about the PI program. Good afternoon and probably good morning for somebody and good evening for others. Um, I'm one of the two co-leads on the MSc Prosperity Innovation and Entrepreneurship program. My name is Konrad Michukiewicz and together with my colleague, uh, Dr. Onya Idoko, um, I lead on the MSc PI uh, program. And as part of our team, we also have a wonderful associate lecture called uh, Mara Torres Pinedo and um, senior teaching and learning administrator, um, Francesca Harrison, as well as a number of PhD students who help in the delivery of the program. And these include uh, uh, Peter Hiraku Nakutul, um, Carmen Abu Amra and Natalie Garland. Uh, some of our sessions are also delivered by external colleagues who are either academics or practitioners. And amongst others, we have an honorary lecturer, Solveiga Paxtaite, who is an innovator and uh, designer who uh, invented a bi bioactive food uh, security label. And we also have on our program, Dr. Tuka Toivonen, who is um, a reader uh, at uh, Central uh, San Martins College. As part of our program, um, what we are trying to do uh, in our research and in teaching practice together with our students, we try to solve wicked problem through entrepreneurship and innovation. And both Yuan and Bob have already mentioned some of these problems or some of these global challenges, as you like. So uh, Yuan addressed the issues of 
um, growing uh, inequalities. Bob addressed issues of climate change. Um, we also addressed some other uh, challenges such as, uh, for example, mass uh, mass migrations and uh, and movements of refugees, either as a result of climate change or as a result of um, of war uh, and uh, and sectarian conflicts. And what we are trying to do as part of this program, we are trying to look at how entrepreneurs or intrapreneurs can find opportunities to address these challenges through uh, entrepreneurial activities. So how they can innovate, how they can organize themselves and devise business models, how they can access, combine, and use different resources, and how they can influence existing structures and institutions. Um, the, what does the MSC Prosperity uh, Innovation and Entrepreneurship Program do? Um, at first, especially in term one, it advances a, a more critical and progressive view of transformative entrepreneurship and innovation. Within this, it builds on need for a broad understanding of entrepreneurship as a practice, policy, intervention, and an institution. So for us, entrepreneurship does not only concern bus concerns businesses, but also, for example, NGOs or entrepreneurial uh, department of uh, governmental agencies. Um, our program also explores the promise and limits of entrepreneurial uh, activity to pro provoke societal, economic, environmental, and political uh, change, as well as draws on a number of theories such as community enterprise effectuation, uh, feminist and the colonial practices, social, uh, social impact theories, and, and others. And within this program, we have five core modules uh, and two elective modules. So all of our students will, in term two, attend classes on a module called Transformative Entrepreneurship and Prosperity Core Concepts. This is um, a, a theoretical module and um, another module called Re Transformative Entrepreneurship. Um, a methods module and in term two our students will uh, attend two other core modules the transformative entrepreneurship and prosperity design and connected innovation project uh, both in term one and term two students will attend one optional module which they will select from a broad variety of uh, of uh, modules um, uh, delivered across ucl uh, and these modules can be chosen both in our department and but also in other parts of the university such as the school of management where students quite often go the departmental sorry the the, the development planning unit school of architecture school of, of planning economics department and and others and then finally in term three uh students focus on their dissertation pro project so they 15,000 worth dissertation and the uh, more detailed um, breakdown of our program um, actually divides the, uh, the divides the program into um, into two into two terms that look at specific different aspects of uh, entrepreneurship and innovation uh, as you like so in uh, in term one we specifically focus on academic knowledges so we focus on th on academic theories and on social science uh, and uh, so social science methods so as part of the uh, module called transformative entrepreneurship and prosperity core concepts we look at different um concepts of um uh, transformative entrepreneurship or related concepts to transformative entrepreneurship such as social enterprise sustainable enterprise community based enterprise and and, and others and we also teach our students methods uh, of uh, social inquiry so within this students learn um quantitative methods qualitative methods how to use them in specific entrepreneurial uh contexts either to um, research uh, entrepreneurship or, uh, 
or to uh, streamline entrepreneurial uh, practices. In term two, we focus specifically on applied methodologies and on, on practices. So there are two modules in term two, and one of them is called transformative entrepreneurship and prosperity design. And uh, as part of this module, you take the knowledge from term one to design your own enterprise, starting either from a global one of the global challenges or from a uh, sustainable uh, development goal. You will work in groups to uh, design an enterprise that will uh, address a burning global challenge. And at the end of that module, you will you will pitch that uh, that idea to others. And the, as part of the second module, which I lead con uh, called Connected Innovation Project, you will work with uh, either one of uh, IGP's research uh, teams or with an external organization who is one of our partners on on a project that they are working on at the moment. So uh, you will be onboarded on a, on, a, on a research and innovation activity that is taking place either within uh, IGP or, uh, or outside it, and you will help the leaders of that project to address a specific innovation uh, challenge. Um, last thing which I wanted to mention, last but not least, uh, uh, our director, uh, Professor Dame Henrietta Moore, is also a co-founder of um, Fast Forward 2030, which is a network of uh, young impact entrepreneurs in the UK, Lebanon, and uh, Kenya. You see, you can see here uh, some of the young entrepreneurs. So, from the left, it's uh, another co-founder and co-chair of that network, Arthur K, who. Um, who, run a, who runs a company called Biobean that turns coffee waste into energy, as well as another company called Skyrim that builds homes on top of London's uh, commercial and uh, um, and housing housing properties. Um, and then to the right, you see Solvega Paxteite, who also teaches on our program, uh, whom I mentioned earlier, and Olivia Siboni, who is uh, one of the uh, 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 impact entrepreneurs um, helping to uh, different enterprises to access uh, access funding and uh, ne network. And uh, that is everything what I had prepared prepared for you. And I'm I'm looking forward to addressing any questions that you might have. Thank you, Conrad, for the very comprehensive introduction. And by this point, we have already talked about the three kind of a programs IGP offers at the master's level for you to choose from. And uh, we do receive a lot of inquiries, I think, uh, gradually in recent years as we develop uh, from students uh, about how to choose and what are the differences between these programs. And I hope you now by now have a better idea uh, about their respective focus. But if you have further questions and if there are um, places where we didn't explain very clearly in the introduction, uh, you're very welcome to drop uh, your comments or questions in the Q&A section. So now we will uh, invite our former student, Amanda, uh, and our current student, Herbert, to give an uh, introduction or talk about their um, learning and student experience with IGP. Thank you, Yuan. So, hello everyone. My name is Amanda. Um, I was a PI student in the 21st, 22 cohort, and I came here through the Chevening Scholarship. I came from a business management background with a fashion diploma and bachelor's degree in entrepreneurship, and I established a wedding gown brand upon my graduation. Um, when I wanted to adopt sustainable practices for my business, I faced challenges because the market awareness is low in my country and there was a lack of entrepreneurial ecosystem in the sustainable fashion sector to support my journey, as well as other resources. And I found that London, the melting pot for diverse entrepreneurs from all over the world, is definitely the place to learn about sustainability and entrepreneurship. 
and choosing the PI program at the Institute for Global Prosperity is the best decision for me. The lecturers are knowledgeable, they offer fresh perspectives, the lectures and discussions taught me to be critical um, in examining prosperity and innovation in the context of my country and particularly in my respective field, as well as finding my own definition of transformation and prosperity. And there are guest lectures from renowned speakers. I think Conrad has mentioned some of them, um, the founders of social entrepreneurs, and we get to talk with them, which was amazing. Um, they came from across disciplines. So really um, it kind of like gave you fresh perspectives whenever someone came in and talk. And these are really helping me to find practical solutions to the grand challenge I was facing related to my sustainable fashion business. And then um, in term one, we are taught about the theoretical foundations. And in term two, we get to work on projects as mentioned earlier. And I work with multi-aid programs, um, the Syrian ref refugee-led NGO based in Lebanon for the Connected Innovation Project module. And then we also pitch a transformational, uh, transformative social enterprise idea together. I pitched it with my team in the transformative entrepreneurship and prosperity design module. And in term three, I can use my um, knowledge to research the specific um, problem I was really curious about, which was about the challenges and opportunities of the sustainable fashion entrepreneurial ecosystem in Indonesia, where I came from. Um, and so those experiences, in addition to my extracurricular at the UCL Innovation and Enterprise, enhance my entrepreneurial skills and help me to create a feasible plan for my future in a realistic and sustainable way that considers all aspects of a business um, from the people, planet, and prosperity point of views. And so I'm now working as a communications assistant at IGP and I plan to pursue my passion in the creative industry while integrating the values and insights I've learned during my studies here at IGP. And I think that's it from me. I'm gonna hand it over to Herbert who um, is going to share his experience as a current student. Thank you very much for that, Amanda. Yes, hi everyone. My name is Herbert. I'm a current student on the Global Prosperity Programme. And I guess I'm a current student. And I guess what kind of attracted me, so I come from a politics background, politics and international relations. And I guess what attracted me to this course was that it was so like transdisciplinary. So across my time at undergrad, I had kind of come across like multidisciplinary, but most of it was just just the one disciplinary but coming to this course when I was researching I actually saw wow I can learn so many new things that I didn't think was like possible like for me I see I saw it as like a mixture of like development politics and econ and I really saw it as a way that would really broaden my horizons uh, I come from a Ghanaian background so another interest as to why I chose this course was because it would give me a chance to learn about prosperity from a non-western perspective and really give me a chance to kind of like immerse myself into the IGP. Um, yeah, that's kind of like the main reasons why I decided to go and study this program. In terms of the actual application process, I found it was relatively, it was hard because obviously you're looking, I'm assuming you guys are looking at a lot of master programs, but for me personally, this was the only one that I felt that really stood out to me. So I just Put my heart and my soul into it and I guess they must have liked it because here I am but yeah I would strongly encourage you guys to yeah, definitely apply whether it's PI, the PPP or Global Prosperity I would definitely strongly encourage you guys to apply and just give it your best shot and yeah I guess also I would also strongly suggest perhaps reading some of the lecturers books and articles because that's what I done and again it works because here I am and then in terms of actually like living in London so you might be able to tell, but I grew up here in London. So this is like my home, my city, but for like the, any international students, prospective students. London is kind of, it kind of lives up to its name. So like it's kind of rainy sometimes, but recently, you know, due to like climate change and things like that, it's becoming more and more warmer, but there's like so many things that you can do in London, whether it's like going to the parks, there's so many societies and clubs as well at UCL. So I'm currently part of the FinTech Society because that's one of my interests. I'm also part of the Diplomatic Society because that's another of my interests. I'm also part of the ACS, which stands for the African Caribbean Society. 
And it's just little things like that that UCL offer and the IGP also offer, which just helps you, you know, build that community and that homey feel. So it's like your home away from home, if you get what I'm trying to say. Um, and yeah, again, it's just a way to really get engaged in, you know, like global issues and problems that require new and innovative solutions because as we've seen from like COP26 and COP27, the world is facing so many dangers and issues, but we need to all come together and try to come with actual solutions that will try and help things for so many different types of people and stuff like that. So yeah, I've so far, just really quickly, I would also add that, yeah, I am enjoying my time here. Like there's so many new things that I'm learning, which is good. And it's just a way for me to develop my professional skills and like leadership and communication different types of writing like recently I had to submit a 500 word blog which was the first time I've ever had to write a blog before because I've just been used to essays 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 um there's also some reports in like my next couple of assignments that are coming up and so it's just a way for you to actually like develop your skills that will serve you well in the real life working world and in your future career so hopefully you guys will apply to whether it's again GP, BPP or PI I'm looking forward to seeing you guys here next year. So all the best in your application process. Thank you very much, um, Amanda and Herbert, for such uh, very practical um, introductions about your experience. And we are really glad to hear that as a, from a staff perspective that you enjoyed uh, the process and also you're benefiting from it. Um, so um, I think... We were now, uh, we've already received some questions regarding uh, scholarships um, in the Q&A section. So I will now into, uh, invite Francesca to give a more detailed introduction about scholarships. I think this is a question that many of our students are um, looking forward to hear more. Francesca. Yep. Thank you, Yuan. Um, so as Yuan mentioned earlier, there are uh, a number of scholarships that are available uh, with different deadlines and eligibility uh, criteria. I will go through, highlight a few here, um, but uh, before I do, I will just say that all of the information I'm about to tell you is available on the IGP Funding Your Studies page. And you can also search all scholarships, all UCL uh, scholarships using the UCL Scholarship Finder and a link to both of those um, web pages has been put in the chat for you. So you don't need to worry about writing down all these deadlines. If you go to the website, they are there. Um, so the first one I'd like to highlight, because the deadline is fast approaching, is the Commonwealth Shared Scholarship Scheme. Um, so the deadline for this is the 13th of December 2022, so very soon. Um, as Yuan said earlier, if you are applying for this, um, if you could drop an email to the igp at ucl.ac.uk email address as well, just to let us know that you're applying. So as we might, might need to um, have a look at your application sooner so that you can meet that deadline for application to the scholarship. Um, so that's the Commonwealth Shared Scholarship uh, Scheme. Uh, another one I'd like to highlight to you is the IGP Equity Fund. This is a scholarship run by the IGP Department. Uh, there are two scholarships available, and the deadline for that one is the 31st of May 2023. Um, you can also apply for the Bartlett Promise Master's Scholarship, um, which again, the deadline for that is the same. It's the 31st of May 2023. Uh, there's also the Bartlett Promise Sub-Saharan Africa Master's Scholarship, and that will be open uh, from the 15th of February, and it will close on the 31st of March 2023. Um, there's also the UCL Master's Bursary. Uh, the deadline for that one is Thursday, the 8th of June 2023. And there's the UCL Global Master's Scholarship, and the deadline for that one is Thursday, the 27th of April, 2023. And as I said, all the criteria for being able to apply for those and the deadlines are on those web pages. So please do go and take a look and make sure if you are applying that you get your applications in by the deadline um, for both your programme and for the scholarship. Um, and to finish off, I just want to remind everyone that applications for all three of our programmes are now open uh, and the deadline for the applications is the 30th, sorry, the 30th of June 2023. Um, so that's all from me. If you've got any more questions, then please put them in the Q&A and we'll move on to our Q&A section now, I believe. Back to you, Yuan. Um, yes, and um, I think we can now move on to the Q&A section. And um, Amanda, do you want to host this section? Yes, I will. Yeah. Thank you, Yuan. Um, 
So we have a question here from, I'm gonna read first from Pili Olivia. Um, I think this one's addressed for Conrad. Um, in your opinion, what would be the biggest difference between the IGB approach, specifically in the Pi Master, with the innovation, public policy, and public value MPA from the Institute for Innovation and Public Purpose? Uh, I think that um, IGP offers a broad, uh, our program offers a broader perspective on entrepreneurship and innovation which considers entrepreneurship as a practice that can be undertaken either as part of entrepreneurial activity or public sector innovation or civic um, society action. Um, and the um, IIPP's program, which is a master's in master's of practice, I think, um, that program focuses specifically on public sector innovation. So if you are looking at working at governmental agencies, or if you are already working at a governmental agency and want to share your knowledge and experiences with other people who um, work at governmental agencies, maybe the IAPP program would be more appropriate. Our program has a, a more broader perspective and it's more focused on entrepreneurship and uh, innovation rather than public policy. However, the, these programs are not mutually exclusive as you, as you like. So there would be some overlaps be, uh, between them. And may I add a quick point to that? Because I just, me and Onya, we just attended America's biggest public policy conference in the in Washington DC last week. And we just came back. And according to my uh, kind of outsider's um, observation, I think a public policy, the definition of public, because of the history of this, of this discipline, um, I think in academic terms, they usually define the public quite narrowly as to usually a uh, government related kind of research. And as I think, as Conrad said, um, it's not necessarily the case, but uh, the tradition of public policy has a strong emphasis on government, where um, when you think about the term generally, public doesn't need to be or exclusively mean the government only, but I think that is, I think the, the academic practice. Uh, well, uh, the education, at, but that might not be the case. So you, I would, if you're considering that program, I would strongly encourage you to attend their open day uh, events to get to know more about that. Um, I think it will be more appropriate for us at the IGP to um, emphasize or give you a better introduction about what we do, because um, I think our understanding of public at the IGP, as we have explained, <laughs> Um, is not specifically limited to a certain sector. And I think we deliberately want to introduce a multidisciplinary um, approach to understand public challenges. So I think it is fair to say that we, we kind of took a problem-oriented approach. We, we, we kind of try to figure out what are the existing problems first, and then think about what are the relevant stakeholders and how to better address these problems. And usually, as you can see, um, the addressing of certain problems would require a very uh, wider collaboration from a wider different part of the society. And that I think, according to my understanding, would be the strength of the IGP program. Um, I think um, that, yeah. I hope that answers that question. Thank you, Conrad and Yuan. I totally agree with that. I um, think solving a grand problem would require interdisciplinary approach. Okay, and the next question, I'm going to um, ask this to Francesca. Um, it's Ashley's question. So she answered um, that she's thinking to apply for Global Prosperity MSc or PPP MSc. I'm wondering if graduates have opportunity to work in consulting or related field. Since this program focuses on social aspect, um, Francesca, do you have um, like historical data of our graduates, where they go? 
Um, I don't have four PPP because that's brand new. Um, so I don't know if Bob in a moment would like to come in and say what kind of jobs we expect students might go into. Um, for global prosperity, I don't know if you want, you, you know, if you have information about where our graduates have gone. Um, I, I don't think I have the data, like a kind of accurate data, but we do interact a lot with our PhD students. And I think from my personal experience, um, and also you need to think about the nature of uh, the, the UK uh, PhD program in general, right? Um, in com especially in comparison to the US uh, systems. Um, as people know, I think it is a known fact that UK um, PhDs are relatively shorter, which allows people who are not interested in, in pursuing a career in academia to pursue a PhD. And that is actually what I got taught from my uh, previous supervisor um, 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 that um, he personally, he's a kind of a kind of a traditional British kind of quite British scholar. He would say that he would strongly encourage people who have the luxury to spend some years in learning, in doing research to pursue a PhD, not because necessarily because you want to pursue a career in PhD, but the whole training process, like teach you how to look at the problem in depth and how to uh, use, like kind of learn the most advanced research method, how to look at the cutting edge problem uh, that is related to your personal interest, related to your career and build up to the knowledge frontier. So this whole training process would be very superficial, or very beneficial for any individual, especially if you are at a young stage, but we also have uh, quite experienced people who are in their middle ages or who want just to want a, a career kind of a change in their middle ages to come to do a PhD. And then they start to embark on a quite new journey after graduating from the PhD. So I think the UK uh, PhD programs allows you to explore two trajectories. So one is in the traditional academic system where you get training a PhD and usually you find a job in academia. But I think um, the UK PhD specifically uh, also allows people to use the all kinds of a set of transferable skills that you have accumulated in the PhD experience to do some practical jobs. And uh, I think our masters would be quite suitable, or not masters, I, I think the PhD would be, be quite suitable, for example, for people who want to join international organizations, for example, uh, the World Bank, uh, the I, uh, IMF, although we quite Criticize. I think the whole development industry in general quite criticize this, um, these international organizations, but they still uh, play a very important role in to, including the UN, right? So you can also join local NGOs or charities. You can also work with uh, a lot of, uh, let's say, the um, uh, development funds, Asian Development Bank, or these development banks, um, which is also quite popular with our program. Uh, you can also join um, consultancy firms to provide a consultancy. And the very interesting recent trends I observe is that those investment banks uh, who are interested in impact investment are starting to recruit uh, social scientists who have been criticizing them for their uh, irresponsible investment for many years. And they start to uh, recruit students from the social science more critical aspect to help improve and deliver a uh, responsible uh, investment in their um, daily business. So we do see uh, increasing interest from the financial sector to recruit students from this um, our background. So I think those might cover um, um, the kind of uh, uh, career opportunities for the at, at least the GP students. Uh, Bob, do you have anything to add for the PI, uh, PPP students? Well, um, I think the whole transdisciplinary approach is going to make people much more employable in the in the future because um, I think that's what <clears throat> all of the sectors are going to be looking for more of. Uh, that actually being able to solve problems, um, you know, from from a particular uh, disciplinary perspective is not really as valuable as being able to look across across the different uh, aspects. Uh, so, so the ability to solve problems, I think, is is, uh, is what uh, what I think both of these programs are are going to provide, and I think that's going to be increasingly 
uh, <clears throat> useful uh, in employment. I mean, my this is a new program, so we don't have any data on on uh, on graduates, but my previous students, you know, have ended up in um, in academia, in government, in business, in NGOs, uh, you know, sort of equally distributed, either masters or PhD students. Um, and I think they've been uh, successful there largely because of their ability to bring together, uh, you know, the, the different ideas and in, in, in innovative ways uh, and, and, pro and solve problems. And I think that's, that's what this training will be, uh, will be about <clears throat> uh, really understanding the system uh, and being able to solve problems in that, in, in this transdisciplinary way. Thank you, you and then Bob. Amanda, can uh, I just jump in? I just yes. want to flag uh, to our attendees that we do have a IGP Perspective Students FAQ web page, and on there there is some more information about where our, our graduates have gone. Um, so if, if Vicky, would you mind uh, just um, adding that link to the chat for everyone? That'd be great. Thank you. Thank you for that. That would be helpful. And so we have last question from Arvind. Um, this is for Bob. Probably you can um, help to explain and clarify this a little bit more. So in chapter seven of your book, Sustainable Wellbeing Futures, you, Prof. Ida, and other co-authors surveyed 11 emergent um, frameworks in the social ecological literature, which correlate to various research areas. Considering this, how can the PPP master studies as the more ecologically focused program enables students from business, economics, technology, engineering, health, education, social development, and etc. background to develop disciplinary transcendence while remaining tethered to disciplinary domains. So um, <laughs> could you talk a little bit more about how to prototype these natural prosperity and the dissertation modules? How can um, they integrate it to, to their background, disciplinary, multidisciplinary right. background? Thanks. And I typed an answer to that to that question already. So I don't know if you could you can yeah, probably maybe, read maybe you can you... probably read that, but that's no worries, um, that's but okay. can you elaborate more <laughs> sure. um, just a little bit like and for example give an just example following of... up on what I was what I was saying. How do you how do you get this transdisciplinary collaboration to actually happen? And I think it takes more than simply, you know, um <clears throat> lectures from different people in, in different disciplines. I think you have to get people working together um, in a sustained way to solve problems. And I think that's what our prototyping natural prosperity course is going to be, a problem-based course where we, we pose a problem to the class and bring in stakeholders and other faculty and, uh, <clears throat> and try to solve the problem, uh, you know, to, to come up with innovative ways to, ways to, uh, to do that. And we've done this, this sort of course uh, many times before, and it, it's always a... Um, uh, an interesting and, and engaging experience for the students because you're not just being talked to, you're being uh, engaged in in, uh, in in solving those problems. Um, so I think that's really the way to to do this uh, transcending uh, disciplinary transcendence. I like that term. <laughs> yeah, um, maybe may I add a point to that? I'm really really glad. Um, to see that our, our potential students getting themselves familiarized with uh, what staff at IGP are doing and closely follow, maybe uh, you can also follow, subscribe to our newsletter if you're interested. And even if you don't come to join the IGP, you're still very, very welcome to get in touch with us and stay um, kind of informed about the activities we do. And uh, especially if you are thinking about applying, uh, try to uh, show, demonstrate very strongly in your personal statement that your personal understanding of any of the program that you are applying to. Uh, for example, if you have read uh, Bob's books or articles or any of the stuff like academic work, uh, do remember to mention them in your personal statement because we do want students who are engaging with us, who have genuine interest in our programs. And I think that would bring a much more enjoyable kind of interactive relationship between um, the teaching staff and the community at IGP and the students yourselves. So uh, I would, uh, well, don't use those kind of a generic uh, kind of a personal statement where you think that a oh, one template might fit different programs. Uh, but usually if you want to increase your chance of su success, uh, we would encourage you to do some research 
and make sure that you are, you will be a good fit for our program and uh, um, state uh, very clearly uh, why you want to apply to these different programs and how the program can benefit you um, based upon your personal interests, your past experience. So do make an effort to personalize your personal statement because we do read your personal statements very carefully and we do value the input and your time spent on researching about our different programs. Yeah. Thank you. And I think we don't have any more questions and it's nearing the closing time. So I think you yes. can um, have closing word for now. Thank you. Yeah. So uh, I think our panelists has introduced different aspects very well. So not too much from me, but we really appreciate the time that you've spent on attending our open day. And you have further questions, you're very welcome to email us directly um, at uh, the email address that Francesca shared with you. But it's very easy. It's just IGP at ucl.ac.uk. So any further questions you have, uh, do remember to drop us an email and we usually respond to email very efficiently. And we also look forward to seeing some of you and uh, hope that some of you uh, who attend the event today will become our future student. But even if you choose not to study with us, uh, we still welcome you to get in touch with us, stay informed and uh, hope that um, we can have other opportunities in the future. For example, we do organize a lot of kind of a public facing lecture series, workshops, uh, conferences. So uh, if you're interested in any of these, you're very welcome to join. Um, so um, I think that's all from me. And uh, thank you very much for attending and thank all the panelists for uh, spending the time to uh, introduce our programs to our prospective students. Thank you. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.